You're already seated. Thank you. Good morning to you all. I'm Rupa Dada, President of the Alumni Board of Governors. It is my privilege to introduce the 2010 Alumni Awards. We are gathered here to honor those fellow graduates and almost graduates whose contributions to our common life have been extraordinary. The men and women who join me on this stage have used their skills to better this university, their fields of expertise, and our society. The medals and awards we give them are symbols of our admiration and our gratitude. The Alumni Board of Governors Awards Committee had the difficult task of choosing today's honorees from among many worthy candidates. While the awards themselves have categories like professional achievement, public service, or alumni service, at this level of excellence, one cannot often distinguish one from the other. Surely this reflects the interdisciplinary approach of this university and the many dimensions of our alumni as individuals. As we learned about our honorees, some strong themes emerged. Regardless of their vocation, today's recipients exhibit profound creativity in their pursuits, feel inspired by their Chicago education, and are admired by those who know them best, not only for their contributions that we honor today, but also for their generous and kind spirits. As one supporter wrote, in a world where most people are driven by power, money, and big egos, this is not how my friend leads life. Humility, graciousness, generosity, and integrity are the traits repeatedly ascribed to our awards recipients. Character inextricably intertwined with accomplishment, and we gladly celebrate both. Finally, I want to let you know that each of today's alumni award winners will take home one of these beautiful trophies, but because they're so substantial, um, we will not be handing them out at the ceremony. And now I would like to introduce University President Robert J. Zimmer. Good morning and welcome. Uh, so we are uh, gathered here this morning uh, for alumni convocation. Is this microphone on? Yes. Uh, we're gathered here uh, this morning uh, for alumni convocation, a very special ceremony uh, to honor alumni for individual achievements, for contributions to society, and commitment to the University of Chicago. The convocation ceremony itself is very closely tied to the history of this institution. Uh, William Rainey Harper, the university's first president, uh, was very focused on the idea of convocation, and he conceived of convocation as a gathering together of the entire university community. Harper realized that an institution as complex as the University of Chicago, and, as and it was indeed complex even then at the time of its origin, uh, needed to reaffirm on a regular basis the strength and purpose that comes from community. The importance of reaffirming the nature of the values of the entire university not just its constituent parts. Well, of course, we don't confer degrees today as we do at uh, many convocations. We do come together to recommit ourselves to our highest ideals. Uh, we come together to reaffirm the university's commitment to pursuit of scholarship in an environment of open, rigorous, and intense inquiry, and our belief in the power of education that takes place in precisely that type of challenging environment. We come together to celebrate the outstanding contributions of individuals and their impact on society, and as well, the lifelong nature of commitment and relationships that we all have and share with the University of Chicago. The award winners that we recognize today are as diverse as the university that we represent. Today we recognize career accomplishments, uh, we recognize public service, the outstanding work of our faculty, service to the university on the part of alumni, 
and outstanding achievement and service on the part of our students. Uh, we very particularly celebrate the singular lifetime work of Nobel Prize winning alumnus and economics professor. When the University of Chicago was founded and the first convocation was held in 1892, there were, of course, no alumni. The University of Chicago now graduates thousands of new alumni every year. Alumni leave our university, go on to a wide variety of endeavors, and they become leaders across the world in virtually every one of these types of endeavors. From Harper's time uh, to the time that each of you was uh, here uh, as a student, and uh, those times, of course, vary uh, to the present and in the future, uh, the university will inevitably see many changes. But with all this change, there is also a great deal of constancy. And that constancy is precisely the enduring values of the university and its commitment to this intense, open inquiry and particular distinctive education that we offer. Uh, this type of community has to be renewed every day. It's renewed every day by the faculty who are here, by the students who are here, and it's renewed every day by the commitment of the entire university community, which very much includes uh, all of the alumni and friends of the university. Uh, and so it is important as we gather together, as we do today, uh, to recognize this constancy that survives the university from its inception and well into its future. Uh, in uh, one week, we're going to have our 503rd convocation, which we will graduate our new students. And at that time, as we do today, we will renew our aspirations that the University of Chicago uh, continues forward with the distinctiveness and purpose that has always guided its history. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth Davenport, Dean of Rockefeller Chapel. Alumni Weekend is a time of celebration when we seek out old friends and renew our ties to one another and to the University of Chicago. But at the same time, we feel deeply the absence of those of our number who are now gone from our midst. At this hour, when we acknowledge the achievements and service of some of our most exceptional alumni and soon-to-be alumni, we pause to remember those who have died and to give thanks for every memory of glad times shared. I invite you now to remember those who are no longer with us as we spend a moment in grateful silence. May we hold their memories ever dear.
present the Howell Murray Alumni Association Medal. The medal recognizes those students who have enhanced the vitality and creativity of life in the university community and are our future alumni leaders. I know you're just about to graduate, or uh, I know you're just about to graduate and probably can't imagine yourself as an alumni leader, but take note, our Alumni Board of Governors President, Rupa Dada, who welcomed us this morning, is a former Howell Murray medalist herself. We expect to see great things from you as the students in the years to come, but for now, will you please rise? This year's honorees have shown leadership in a wide range of programs, from student government and Model United Nations to those supporting community rights and community health, multicultural affairs, new collaborations in the arts, aid to Haiti, and efforts to integrate new students into the life of the university. They have organized student cultural associations and founded groups, including one that connects students with alumni. They have achieved high academic honors across every academic discipline and have excelled in athletics. They are artists and promoters of the arts, debaters, activists, athletes, fundraisers, advocates, scholars, and leaders. They have served as mentors, inspired others, and worked to raise awareness of the issues that matter most to them. Through their energy, creativity, and drive to serve others, they have made, a, have made a major impact on the life of the university. It's my honor to present you with the recipients of the Howell Murray Alumni Association Medal, all of whom are graduating members of the class of 2010. Their collective contributions have significantly improved the lives of those around them, both on our campus and in the community, and have set a high bar for future students who follow them. I ask that you please hold your applause until all of the medalists have been announced. Ashton Berry, can you please come forward? <laughs> Agnes Bugay. Alicia Bushman. Antonia Clifford. Benjamin Field. Siangir Mu. David Klein. Jillian Lenson.
Angelina Liang. Brittany Ann Little. <laughs> Aviva Rossman. Bradley Trotter. And Admama Wilshire. Three of our recipients cannot be here with us today, but we'd like to recognize them as well. Jonathan Curry, Abimbola Aludokun, and Race Wright. Please join me in applauding these remarkable individuals as we welcome them into our community of alumni. Group. Thank you. And now I invite you to watch a video presentation on our alumni awards. The University of Chicago has celebrated alumni leaders since it was founded more than a century ago. In 1941, the Alumni Council marked the university's 50th anniversary by awarding medals to alumni for distinction in their fields of specialization and for service to society. We welcome you here today as we continue this rich tradition of acknowledging alumni and thanking them for their significant contributions to the university and to the world. Over the last 69 years, the Alumni Association is proud to have honored many extraordinary alumni. Alumni such as James Dewey Watson, Nobel Prize winning biologist who co-discovered the structure of DNA. Kurt Vonnegut Jr., novelist, satirist, and preeminent American writer. Benjamin O. Davis, commander of the Tuskegee Airmen and the first African American general of the Air Force. Susan Sontag, author, literary theorist, and critic. John Grunsfeld, physicist and astronaut, who served as NASA's chief scientist. Katherine Dunham, groundbreaking choreographer, author, and educator. Ray Suarez, American broadcast journalist and senior correspondent for PBS Evening News. Philip Glass, one of the most influential composers of the late 20th century. And John Paul Stevens, U.S. Supreme Court Justice and the third longest serving justice in Supreme Court history. These bright stars are just a few of the many graduates of the university whose discoveries and accomplishments shape the world in which we live. Looking back across a quarter of a century to, to uh, the University of Chicago, I think of the, of the truly great people in fields around my own that I became very close to. Um, I think of Gil White in, in, in geography, of, of Bill McNeil in history. Uh, I think of a number of, of great economists, beginning with, with Ted Schultz and coming on through Gary Becker. Uh, uh, I think of, of a whole set of individuals who have been, had a dominant influence in the world in their own field and who I came to know directly and in conversation over a period of years. And I think that's what, what, what higher education has to be, and I think, I think we do it very well. I can tell you personally that getting an award um, means a great deal. 
I was very lucky in, 19, in 2001 to receive a public service award, which uh, meant the world to me. I was thrilled it, um, and uh, touched and moved and nothing could make me happier than at the university where I spent so much time and which I enjoyed so much was giving me this honor, this recognition. Today, the Alumni Board of Governors presents a group of honorees who are the heirs to a remarkable legacy of achievement. We salute these individuals for their service to society and commitment to the university. It is they who shape the future of the world and inspire us all toward excellence in our own lives. I'm very impressed with the people on this stage today who have, uh, who have achieved such excellence in their professions and distinguished themselves in so many ways and I want to congratulate them for all that they have done to make this world a better place. Good morning. My name is Greg Marecki, and it is my privilege to serve as a member of the Alumni Board of Governors. A lifetime of service to the university often begins very early. The Young Alumni Service Award honors outstanding volunteer service to the university by an individual aged 35 or younger. Our two Young Alumni Service recipients have both made their mark on the Washington, D.C. Alumni Club have served their college classes, and have shown tremendous leadership and dedication to the university. They are two of Chicago's brightest young stars, and we look forward to having them as valued members of our remarkable community for decades to come. The 2010 Young Alumni Service Awards go to Tack Lowe and Mary Tang. Tack Lowe, would you please come forward? Tack, for your creative contributions to the Washington, D.C. Alumni Club, for your leadership and young alumni participating efforts, and for your service to your college reunion committee, to career advising and planning services, and to the Alumni Schools Committee, we are pleased to present you with a Young Alumni Service Award. Wow, I don't know what to say. Um, first, distinguished guests, fellow alumni, uh, current students, I uh, just want to thank you uh, all for, for being here and allowing me to be on the stage and uh, to talk in front of you. I'd also like to thank the DC alumni community, the leadership uh, board over there, uh, Laura Haynes, um, Matt Whitaker, Mary Tang, Nancy Beach, uh, Sarah Toussaint, and uh, uh, Gain Christensen for all their support. I just want to say this this university has has given me a lot. Um, a fantastic education, friends that have lasted some of the, the challenges of, of life, and, and now this award among these uh, distinguished guests. And this is this is a tremendous honor and um, it is definitely something that will, will carry forward and uh, contribute back to the university evermore. Thank you very much. Mary Tang, will you please come forward? Mary, for your re relentless support of the University of Chicago, through your efforts on behalf of the alumni community in Washington, D.C., including serving as the Alumni Schools Committee Chair and showing a strong commitment to your college class by serving as class correspondent and on your reunion committee, we are delighted to present you with a Young Alumni Service Award. very much. I feel very honored to be here today and I'm also very grateful for dresses with pockets. Uh, 
This weekend has truly been memorable, and I cannot imagine a better scenario than receiving this prestigious award with my fellow friend, Tack Lowe. Many gracious thank yous to Sarah Toussaint, Gayen Christensen, Olivier Long, and others who have supported me for this nomination. Each of them have been inspiring and are great encouragement for service to the university as well. This university was a second home during a very difficult time, a room of requirements of sorts through its academic rigor and the experiences that have shaped me into the person I am today. It is only fitting to return the favor and share this wonderful secret with the young minds who don't know of it through Alumni Schools Committee, interviewing and reaping the rewards of seeing the enjoyments of alumni who contribute to the activities. And it is through this spirit and infectious giddiness that I encourage you all to participate in the same vein. We cannot always donate monetarily, but through service we are getting the bigger reward and the university benefits from our enthusiasm as well. And with that mindset, I will continue to contribute, nurture, and grow this little place that has played such an integral part of my life and this place that I love. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Tim Child, Executive Director of the University of Chicago Alumni Association. The university thrives because thousands of dedicated alumni like Mary and Tack, volunteers are, in, are intensely committed to all that is distinctive and inimitable about Chicago. Alumni volunteers help create and maintain ties among their fellow alumni, attract the most promising students, raise support for the institution, and act as advocates for the university around the world. Uh, my name is John Davey. I'm a member of the Alumni Board of Governors, another one. You've seen several members. Uh, there are many members of the Alumni, alumni Board up here on the stage, and there are many out in the audience. People who are on the Alumni Board are dedicated to the efforts that our alumni carry out all the time and we are here to um, uh, honor some people who are great alumni. And so it's with great respect and appreciation that we present this award to the, those whose commitment to the university is quite similar to our own. This year's winners, the Alumni Service Awards, go to Coleman Seskin, James McQuaid, and Paul McCudden. Coleman Seskin, could you please step forward? For your leadership and numerous contributions to the Biological Sciences Division and Medical Center, including your service on the Visiting Committee, the Alumni Senate, and the Biological Science Division Alumni Association Executive Committee, for chairing the Editorial Committee for Medicine on the Midway, and for serving as Class Chairman of the Pritzker School of Medicine, Class of 59, we are pleased and honored to present you with the Alumni Service Award. It's, uh, thank you very much. When I entered here as a young man of 14, I was uh, surrounded by this beautiful neo-Northern Illinois Gothic spires on the Midway. And it proved to be a wonderful, wonderful experience. It gave me a lifelong education and images of excellence to follow. This was continued in the medical school. I was left with a feeling that it was a moral obligation to give back whatever little I could, um, and it's proved to be one of the great pleasures of my life. If uh, the one last thought was, I just wish it could have been more. Thank you. James, James McQuaid, would you please come forward? For your loyal service as an effective and innovative chair of one of the, oops, sorry, lost my place here. For your commitment to your college reunion class and serving as gift chair and class agent, for your dedication to students in establishing the James D. McQuaid Scholarship Fund, for distinguishing yourself by serving as international president of Delta Upsilon, and for your leadership and alumni volunteer ser activity services, we are honored to present you with the Alumni Service Award.
Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the committee and friends and faculty who nominated me for this award. It's a great honor. My, uh, my appreciation for the University of College of Education is beyond words. Uh, we talk a lot about the University of Chicago teaches you how to learn new things, and my whole life as a success is because of that learning. I, got, I entered into a computer environment very early in its time, and the one thing I had to do was learn how to learn new things constantly. Uh, that learning led to a very successful career, which I'm very happy to say the University of Chicago met so much through its accomplishments. I had a great career, had a great life, and uh, the, my parents paid the first two years of my college. The University of Chicago loaned me the money for the second two years. It took me four years to get a degree. It took me 10 years to pay back the loan. But I have to say that that was the greatest investment of my whole, entire life. Thank you. Paul McCudden, could you please step forward? For your loyal service as an effective and innovative chair of one of the university's largest alumni schools committees, and for your leadership in Los Angeles area alumni club activities, we are honored to present you with the Alumni Service Award. Thank you. Well, if the um, University of Chicago has taught me anything, it's don't presume to give a uh, words of advice to a University of Chicago crowd. So I'll just say thank you very much to the university, to the uh, alumni board, and to my local Los Angeles uh, alumni club. Uh, I really appreciate the, uh, the good words. And uh, to the young, soon-to-be alumni, I encourage you wherever you go in the fall to uh, please uh, engage the uh, young students who are applying to the university in discussions. It's a, it's a great experience, and it's uh, a wonderful gift to give back to the university. Thank you. I'm Herb Kaplan. The Public Service Award honors a special combination of virtues, service above self, creativity, generosity, and it leads to very great things indeed. It is important to note, however, that the alumni who will receive this award today are not recognized just for their individual contributions to making the world a better place, although they have certainly done this. They are recognized as well for inspiring others to service. We award the 2010 Public Service Awards to Ann Goodman and Roy Prosterman. Ann Goodman, would you please come forward? For your pioneering global efforts on behalf of women in business, corporate responsibility, and sustainable development, and for your work with governments and NGOs in making a wide and lasting impact in these enterprises, we award you with the Public Service Award. Well, I, I am thrilled and uh, I'm sincerely thankful to all of you, uh, to those who nominated me, to those who supported me with letters of recommendation, uh, and to everybody here today who comes to honor all of us. I can honestly say that whatever I didn't learn from my parents about navigating life at a very early age, I learned here at the U of C. In my life up to now, which has been very eclectic, I see that the values, philosophical, personal, and professional, that drew me here, they continue to support my life decisions, which are often based on intuition, but supported, importantly, by critical thought. Those values include learning to learn, a belief that imagining new possibilities can lead to creating new realities, and an appreciation that the life of the mind 
is often best balanced by just looking around and absorbing the lessons of one's environment. Thank you again to all of you for giving me this lovely award. Uh, Roy Prosterman, would you please step forward? For your research, teaching, and field work on legal issues and land reform and economic development, all toward the goal of alleviating world poverty, we award you with the Public Service Award. What an honor, and, and what a setting for this ceremony. This must be the most magnificent chapel at any uh, of the American universities. Uh, I was trying to think back uh, to some of the chains of causation, uh, beginning with my uh, liberal arts AB at Chicago uh, that had led to our work on land tenure reform for the rural poor and looking through the shelves of my library, I found a book by Edward Banfield called Government Project and was reminded that even in the second month of my studies here, that was probably October of 1951, uh, I came to recognize uh, thoughtfully and critically that collective farming might be an interesting theory, but that it had a number of contradictions with human nature and human psychology. And decades later, when I was doing field work in Russia, uh, it helped me, I think, uh, frame the work in a way which emphasized and, and certainly recognized the importance of the tiny plots, the dacha plots, the household auxiliary plots that occupied 3% of the land that were individually held uh, and pr produce 25 to 30 percent of the total value of agricultural uh, production and helped us to frame programs that then provided ownership uh, and titles to that land. And then, again, thinking outside the box, as I'd been trained to do at Chicago, recognize that maybe private plots are not just, or dacha plots are not just a phenomenon in collectivized agricultures. Maybe they have some relevance to the agricultures in developing countries that were not centrally planned, like India or Pakistan or Indonesia. And lo and behold, it turns out they do. So we've now got major programs going in four Indian states to give microplot ownership, uh, indeed, not just to the family, but to women in the family uh, with very striking results, all traceable uh, to Edward Banfield et al. Thank you, Chicago. I am Judith Stein, member of the Alumni Board of Governors, and it is my pleasure to introduce the 2010 Professional Achievement Awards. Today we honor six individuals whose fields of work range from medicine, economics, and corporate government, governance to filmmaking, policy making, and wine making. Uh, I think we've all discovered you never know where a University of Chicago degree will take you. I'm Mark Hansen, the Dean of the Social Sciences Division. The impact of today's professional achievement honorees is vast, and their accomplishments are of global significance. They have changed our understanding of infection, transformed global finance, influenced major American business practices, and revolutionized the way the world views American wines. The 2010 Professional Achievement honorees are Bruce Beutler, Lisa Fruchtman, Christiane Laroule, Neil Menno, Nell Minow, Myron Scholes, and Warren Viniarski. Dr. Bruce Beutler, would you please come forward?
for your important research and advances in medical science, including how we perceive infections, which led to one of the greatest discoveries in the history of immunology, we are proud to award you the Professional Achievement Award. It's really a great honor for me to be here. I'm enormously grateful to the Alumni Board of Governors. It was almost 33 years ago that I started medical school here at the University of Chicago. And I remember on the very first day, our Dean of Students, Joseph Seidhamel, told us how we would be learning to learn. And I happen to remember that because it's one of the first things that was said to me. And I've thought of it many times over the years. We often uh, tell our children that it's fun to learn, but anyone who's ever tried very seriously to learn uh, knows that it's sometimes a very difficult, exhausting process. And yet civilization is just impossible without it. If one learns only what's taught in medical school, that really isn't very much. And so the greatest gift that I received was to keep learning, to develop techniques to learn, to really keep uh, accumulating knowledge. And I'll always be grateful to the University of Chicago for that. Thanks very much. Myron Scholes, would you please come forward? For your tremendous contribution to economics, including the Black-Scholes equation, the model that provides the fundamental conceptual framework for valuing options and has become the standard in financial markets worldwide, as well as for your work here at the university's Center for Research and Securities Prices, developing and analyzing the center's important database of high-frequency stock market data, we are honored to award you with the Professional Achievement Award. Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, appreciate the uh, Alumni Association uh, selecting me at this time. And I uh, want to say that one of the interesting points is when I had given talks after I uh, left this university at various alumni associations uh, around the world, whether it's New York or London, I was always amazed at the uh, warmth of the alumni and uh, their uh, joy in continuing to uh, learn new things. I was, uh, there's a big contrast because I do give talks around the world and, and, and the audiences are different, but the warmth, the questions, the desire to continue to grow and to continue to learn was always to me very, very stimulating. And unfortunately, I knew there would be a cost again coming to this alumni award ceremony because another alumni association asked me to give a talk uh, to, their, um, to their association and uh, I presume others will as well. <laughs> the, uh, one of the great things about the University of Chicago uh, when I came here was that uh, it was a place that taught me to think and taught me to do research. It taught me to really understand how to do research. I knew nothing when I came here. I was, uh, came from Canada and I, didn't, and I came to the University of Chicago serendipitously, virtually by luck, I think. And then a further luck allowed me to uh, become a computer programmer when I didn't even know what computer programming was or where the computer was. And then one summer I became a computer nerd. But in so doing, in 1962, was I did research or research work and helped to the uh, professors in the uh, business school in the economics department at the University of Chicago, those professors loved what they did. And, and uh, either because I was a good programmer or maybe they liked some of the ideas that I had, they encouraged me to go into the PhD program, which I did do, and that was just changed my, my entire life. But the wonderful part about being at the University of Chicago was that all the professors were vertical experts. They knew everything in their areas, and it was wonderful to learn from them. But it allowed me as a student to be horizontal, to steal from each one of them, and create from each of them 
a new way of thinking about things. And that is what the beauty of having uh, vertical experts, but a cross-sectional ability to take a diversity of educational ideas and pursuits and then build your own from that and to move forward. And uh, for my teachers, some who are now passed away, I owed a tremendous amount. And to the University of Chicago, I owe a tremendous amount. So I thank you as my fellow alumni and to the association once again uh, for selecting me for this award. Thank you. Nell, Milla, Nell Minow, would you please come forward? For your transformative work in the field of corporate governance, securities law, shareholder rights, and the modern corporation, for co-founding the corporate library, and for your role in drafting some of the key legislation that affects all American corporations today, we are pleased to award you with the Professional Achievement Award. Thank you very much. Uh, my parents, who are here today, reminded me that this is actually the second award I've received from the University of Chicago. Some years ago in this very room, uh, at graduation, I was given the award for the most improved student. <laughs> I feel that this is in very much the same spirit, <laughs> and it will continue to inspire me to continue to try to improve. Um, when my then boyfriend, now husband, and law school classmate, David Apatow, who grew up in Hyde Park, was advising me that uh, this is where we should come to law school. He said that I might have three very tough years, but then for the rest of my life, whenever anybody asked me where I went to law school, I would be very, very proud. And as usual, he was right. Thank you. Warren Vinyarski, would you please come forward? For your historic role in elevating the prestige of the fledgling American wine industry to global significance, transforming how Californian wines are viewed worldwide. It began in 1976 when Stag's Leap won first place at the historic Paris wine tasting and continues to this day. We are delighted to award you with the Professional Achievement Award. When I left the university in 1964 to head out to California, I was leaving behind some teaching and learning here at the university. I took that with me to California, and I occupied myself with the life of the grape. You may wonder what the connection is. <laughs> Occupying myself with the grape is something that happens every year. And the grape only lives for one year. But inside the grape, there is something called the seed. And the seed has its eye out and is longing for eternity. Eternity is something that the university is concerned with. It, what is always. And this is a week, I understand, this ceremonial embodies the idea of gratitude and I want to express my gratitude to the university for its ongoing concern with what is always. 
And the fact that to occupy that concern, it has great teachers, among whom, at that time, for me, and I count myself fortunate, was someone named Leo Strauss, for whom I have the greatest admiration and whose concern with what is always was formative to my concern also to what is only for a year. Thank you for this honor. Our final two honorees, Christiane Larelet and Lisa Fruchtman, cannot be here today due to professional commitments. They will receive their awards in absentia, and we're both very, really, very sorry to miss this ceremony. Uh, Lisa is currently filming in Rwanda, but she, uh, she is extremely honored, and she uh, sent well, she shared with us how, uh, how honored she is to receive this award, especially as she writes, quote, my life has not unfolded along the lines I expected when I was a student here. I think many of us can say that as well. Uh, Lisa is receiving her award today for her success as an Academy Award film editor. To learn more about her award, please see the printed program. Christian Laurelet asks that we share the following statement. Quote, I deeply regret not being able to join my dear university today in order to receive the Professional Achievement Award. The University of Chicago holds a very special place in my life, not only due to the solid education that I received, but also for the great attachments built during my years in this noble academic house. The spirit of the University of Chicago is present in the history of Chile, in the great reforms undertaken in past decades, and in the heart of many professionals who are now playing a role in the public sector as well as the private one. Therefore, I feel it is a great honor to have been given this award. I had hoped to be able to walk again among the quads and classrooms and to meet again with all those persons who are very dear to me and who have influenced my career. However, my responsibilities in the government of President Sebastian Piñera and a very busy schedule, especially at this moment, have kept me from traveling and sharing with all of you. With all my gratitude and affection, Christian Laroulet. for their mentoring, support, and ability to inspire. The Norman McLean Award is named for Professor Norman McLean, who came to the University of Chicago for graduate school and remained to teach English for 40 years. I'm honored to present this year's Norman McLean Award to two distinguished faculty members who are also alumni of the university. We have invited friends of these stellar faculty to come and tell you briefly why each of them is deserving of this award. As I call your names, will both the faculty member and former student come forward, please? Frank Reynolds, Professor Emeritus of the History of Religions in the Divinity School and in the Department of South Asian Languages and Civilizations, and his former student, Winifred Fowler Sullivan. I am delighted, as a rep representative of his many students, to honor Frank Reynolds as a recipient of the Norman McLean Faculty Award. Frank has had a distinguished career in the study of religion, 
particularly in the study of Southeast Asian Buddhism. He is also a master teacher. During his 30 years at the university, he worked tirelessly, selflessly, and with infectious enthusiasm to promote the needs of his students, of this university community, and of the academic study of religion. In an age of specialization, one of Frank's great strengths has been his commitment to and expertise in fields across the divinity school areas of study. Perhaps most significantly for PhD students in the history of religions, he taught a course every year at his house called Problems in Histories of, History of Religions, known as the Problems Course. It brought together students with very different interests to read and critique each other's work. In that seminar, future scholars forged their own intellectual identities, as well as the collegial bonds that would continue to sustain them in their careers. It is in very large part because of Frank that those who studied very different religious traditions at the Divinity School, and in very different ways, understood themselves and still understand themselves today to be engaged in a common endeavor. A persistent tension in the modern study of religion exists between the practice and the study of religion. Frank is entirely comfortable moving between the liberal model of the research university and the committed model of the religious community. That comfort was of enormous service to the Divinity School and to his students. To, to participate in a religious community is not to abandon one's critical faculties. It is, I think, rather for Frank, an acknowledgment of deep truths about the human condition that are expressed there. Frank's work is and has always been deeply collaborative. In countless ways, he has brought together in conversation scholars from around the world. His graduate students were warmly included in these endeavors and handsomely acknowledged. Many of the resulting volumes continue to be standard references for scholars of religion. Ten years after Frank's retirement, as a world of many religious traditions, cultures, and ideologies struggle to find ways to live together, the special gifts that Frank brought to his work as a teacher and scholar and the ongoing need for those gifts are only more obvious and more acute. As a citizen of this university, his contributions were unmatched. It is fitting that we honor him here in this place today. Well, it was about 50 years ago that I came to this university to study for one year to learn a little bit more about Buddhism. When, when I came, I discovered that Buddhist studies were here, but I also discovered something else. There was a religious emphasis in the divinity school was changing at this time, and we were moving into a period of trying to generate a way of studying religion within the humanities and within the social sciences, a way of re studying religion to learn something about it that could move on in, out of Chicago into the university community. Only in Chicago could this have happened. The situation here, past administrations, present administrations has encouraged this. Deans of schools encourage it. Teachers, Wendy over here, uh, others, uh, have had a mission to bring this different kind of study of religion uh, into the American Academy and beyond the American Academy in the world. I have just been so privileged, so joyful, and so honored to have been a contributor uh, in this process. Uh, and this award is a wonderful uh, culmination of that process. Thank you very, very much. Amy Cass senior lecturer in the Humanities Collegiate Division, and her former student, Karen Hyman, who is also a member of the Alumni Board of Governors.
Thank you, Eva. I am Karen Hyman, a member of our Alumni Board of Governors and also chair of our awards committee. It was also my great good fortune to begin my life at our alma mater as Miss Karen Kapner. I speak in the voices of all of those people here today. For the gift of life, our traditions instruct us that we owe honor to our parents. For the gift of endowing our lives with meaning and purpose, our teachers command a special sense of gratitude. Over 34 years of teaching at Chicago, spanning several generations of students, Amy Cass has generously bestowed this gift on hundreds of students through inspired teaching and close readings of the great works of literature, poetry, and philosophy. It's my honor and privilege to speak on behalf of all of the beneficiaries of that gift by presenting Amy Cass with the Norman McLean Faculty Award for Teaching. Several generations ago, Amy Cass helped launch my own intellectual odyssey, opening the classes on the Iliad and the Odyssey with completely bracing and exhilarating questions about mortality, friendship, marriage, and community that have continued to animate my real journey well beyond the classroom. Is the best life to be found in pursuit of honor, glory, love, knowledge, or service? What can be learned from the friendship of Achilles and Patroclus? What is the meaning of anger? As one former student wrote, she doesn't teach the humanities as a discipline, a set of texts and ideas to be mastered, but rather as a sustained and urgent, both personal and universal inquiry into the most fundamental questions of mankind. In teaching what and how she does, she provokes in others the majesty of the human spirit, the yearning to do and be better, humility, but also pride in the sight of human excellence, the very serious and the very joyful task of committing ourselves to living well. This award, however, is as much a matter of the heart as a matter of the mind. As our teacher, you have enlarged our imaginations with insights about Achilles and Patroclus, Penelope and Odysseus, Prospero and Miranda. But your enduring effect on the real world of our marriages, our communities, our friendships, and our children is incalculable. Tributes received in your honor all sounded the same note. Not a day goes by where, at our dinner tables, classrooms, boardroom, boardrooms, and all the other pathways we follow in the real world. Where we don't recall the generosity of spirit, the joy of learning, the loving kindness extended to us all. You have interwoven learning to think and learning to live in, as one student wrote, ways that are ennobling. In gratitude and with joy, imagining hundreds of your students behind me, and I think several hundreds out there. It's my great pleasure to present you the Norman McLean Award for your teaching. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure I'm going to get this out. <clears throat> 
with a full heart and very deep gratitude. I thank you, Karen, and the students for whom you spoke for your generous, too generous remarks. And I thank the university for this award and for the privilege of teaching in our college. I am deeply grateful, especially for the goodwill, openness, engagement, and generosity of the many, many students I have been blessed to teach and to learn with and from over these years. Finally, in accepting this honor for my teaching, I want to express my profound gratitude and indebtedness to Jock Weintraub, my undergraduate teacher and mentor who inspired and directed me toward my life work. Those of you who had the good fortune to study with Jock know precisely what I mean. May his still living memory continue to bless us all. And finally, finally, I want to thank uh, the college for introducing me to the man who became my life dialectical partner, teaching partner, and husband, Leon Kess. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I am Katrina Vidal and a member of the Alumni Board of Governors. When it comes to dedication to the University of Chicago, Pat Rosenzweig is unmatched. She is tireless in her volunteerism and her efforts have benefited both students and alumni. She has been a force within the university's career advising and planning services, helping countless students and alumni professionally by volunteering every week throughout the year, including summers. She has served her college reunion class as well. She played a pivotal role in founding, and I witnessed this, the UC2MC, the Chicago Area Alumni Club. An admirer wrote, and I quote, as a PhD student at the University of Chicago, I was thrilled when I first heard through the CAPS office that Pat was a member of their volunteer staff. Her previous business background as a Chicago legend in the field of architectural marketing and networking was already well known to me. Indeed, any person strolling through our beautiful campus would do well to know her name and recognize her professional work. With Pat on board, CAPS has gained a wealth of business experience and real world savvy. The scope of her impact upon my job search is beyond paraphrase or simple summary. I like to think of Pat as my secret weapon. While her own merits as a seasoned professional and marketing genius are sterling and always in evidence, she avoids letting her formidable expertise overwhelm our discussions. Rather than prescribing specific solutions or a particular word or phrase, she most often leads me in the proper direction to discover for myself the right choices. The manner and content of her coaching instills not only practical improvements, but also creativity. I am inspired by Pat to write with not only a critical eye, but also with energy, even a touch of exuberance. She is truly a role model. On a personal note, 30 some years ago, Pat Rosenzweig reached out to me when I was a recent graduate of the college and she pulled me into her orbit. That is how I became involved with alumni activities. So it is with particular pleasure that I am here to award you the Alumni Service Medal and to acknowledge your service to the university for this award in 2010. Hi, 
obviously didn't coach that person out of hyperbole. Um, nor does Katrina remember that she didn't get a job that I had formerly had because they never wanted to work with the U of C person again. They wanted to think too much. In any case, thank you especially to my bosses at CAPS, Meredith Daw and Deb Nibel, for the privilege of helping launch the careers of some of the most inspiring and accomplished young people that any university would be proud to have. And more recently, uh, to help relaunch the careers of alums who have, in many cases, faced, faced the reality that even a U of C econ major can be laid off during a recession as deep as this one. I'm really proud of this award, and thank you. My name is Saj Sahai. I'm also a member of the Alumni Board of Governors. Um, on behalf of the ABG, it is truly my great honor and personal pleasure to, in, to present the Alumni Medal to Gary Becker, someone who's actually been transformational in my own personal life. In awarding him the 2010 Alumni Medal, the greatest honor the, the Alumni Association can bestow, the UFC recognizes Mr. Becker's extraordinary contributions to the university as a professor in economics, 
sociology, and the Booth School of Business, as well as for his research that illuminates how economic decisions influence people's lives. Gary Becker exemplifies the University of Chicago spirit, cultivating knowledge and enriching human life. Mr. Becker earned a bachelor's degree at Princeton University in 1951 and a doctorate at the University of Chicago in 1955. He taught at Columbia University from 1957 through 1968 and then returned home to the UFC. Gary Becker is one of the first economists to branch into what were traditionally considered topics belonging to sociology, including racial discrimination, crime, and families. His approach to economics as the study of human behavior is quite simply groundbreaking. He has explored the economic implications of interactions with families. He has applied economic analysis to the study of prejudice against minorities. He has examined the payoff of investment in human capital, such as an individual's education. His influential work has earned him the John Bates Clark Medal in 1967, the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1992, the National Medal of Science in 2000, and finally, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor in 2007. Through his leadership and tireless commitment to his work, he has had a fundamental impact on how economists approach the profession. Professor Becker, will you please come forward? For your dedication to the study of economics, your innovation and zeal in exploring new ideas, and for your long-standing commitment to our university, we award you the 2010 Alumni Medal. As a professor, I'm used to a lectern, so um, uh, I prefer to lecture from here. It's an enormous honor to receive this medal, not only because of the distinguished predecessors, so Bob Adams, um, among others, um, Susan Sontag, and many others, uh, per persons of enormous distinction, but to be honored by my fellow alumni is especially rewarding. So, and to share the platform with other alumni who are being honored for various enormous contributions to different forms of activity. I entered the University of Chicago as a 20-year-old fresh out of Princeton. A pretty good university, too. But the University of Chicago opened my eyes to true intellectual discourse and interactions among disciplines vitality of the discussions among faculty, among students, my fellow students, and between faculty and students was both eye-opening and tremendously exciting. And I used to say, I can't wait to get to the next class. Um, it was such an exciting experience. Of course, I mainly studied economics. My teachers taught me, and, and this is the most valuable lesson I learned from them, that economics was not a game being played by clever academics, but was a serious subject that helped us understand the real world that we lived in. And that was a lesson I took to heart and tried to convey to my students and in my research. I had several economics teachers who greatly influenced me, including Greg Lewis, T.W. Schultz, Jacob Marshak, Al Hargberger. But clearly, the most important influence on me as a student was Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman was known as a great researcher, a controversial public intellectual, but he was one of the most remarkable teachers I ever encountered. Um, he stimulated economics. He challenged you at every section. I was fortunate, however, in addition to these economic studies, to sample courses in other fields 
that I, where I encountered other outstanding teachers and intellectuals. I attended lectures by Rudolf Carnap, one of the great philosophers on the philosophy of science. I took a magnificent course by Leonard Jimmy Savage on mathematical statistics. I attended the famous course by Edward Levy, an Aaron director on antitrust and related issues. I attended various evening seminars organized by Frederick Hayek from the Committee on Social Thought. The topic of discussion in those seminars differed every year, but he invited distinguished faculty from throughout the university. I heard Enrico Fermi speak about methodology in physics, and Sewell Wright about methodology in biology, and for both of them, the whole universe started from their subject, but that's not natural. They showed how their methodology incorporated everything. I heard from Milton Friedman on methodology in economics and other great members of the faculty. So it was, that was a, a unique experience that I had to hear people like Fermi speak um, about uh, their great work. I listened to lectures by sociologists such as Edward Schills, by anthropologists such as Clifford Gertz, by political scientists such as Hans Morgenthau and Strauss, and many others from many different fields, not all of which I remember, but I know at the time they greatly influenced me. Now, I left Chicago, as was mentioned, and spent about 12 years at Columbia. And I left in part because I, of the overwhelming power of my teachers I thought it would be important for me to be on my own and not always have my teachers to back me up when I got into uh, argument or other difficulties. And I had, I had, a, had a fine time, 12 years at Columbia. But I began to feel as a young elder statesman, and I felt if I came back to Chicago, I certainly wouldn't be allowed to have that feeling. And I didn't want to have that feeling. Um, I even now don't consider myself an elder statesman, and certainly not in 1970 when I returned to the University of Chicago. I knew I would be challenged by the faculty, by the students, whatever I had accomplished wouldn't matter in terms of the discussions we had. And I did find that. And again, I had great colleagues in economics and business. I mean, so it was a period uh, of a remarkable period of strength in both those disciplines. But I also had important colleagues who I interacted with on a close basis from other disciplines. So I was repeating what I had seen as a student, the interaction among different fields. That impressed me as, as an important way to go, whether you're in economics or any other subject. So I had close uh, relations with the late James Coleman, one of the great sociologists, became a close friend of mine, very innovative. I had close relations with William Julius Wilson, a great sociologist also, working on the role of, of African Americans in American society. I had uh, close contact with members of the political science departments, just uh, such as Jan Elster and Russell Harden. And I can go on uh, with uh, many other areas. Coleman and I started a an interdisciplinary seminar on, so, on sort of behavior in the social sciences. It's still going to this day, although unfortunately Jim passed away a number of years ago, but I've had a successor of co-directors of this center. I had close contact with members of the law school, people as diverse as Richard Posner, a very good friend of mine. We came about the same time with fellow bloggers, uh, but also with Cass Sunstein, uh, very different, uh, now head of the Regulatory Commission in Washington, but a, a, a tremendous intellectual, honest intellectual, and we argued about a lot of issues, but we argued at an at a intellectual level, not at a personal level. Uh, so uh, my time here as a faculty member uh, reinforced what I experienced as a student. And I must mention, last but not least, two other major influences, the students I encountered over these years. Christian Yara one of the honorees today who couldn't make it, professional achievement award, was a student of mine. 
um, and many others. And what I liked about the students at Chicago was it didn't matter what, uh, who you were or what your recognition was or what prizes you won. Uh, they would challenge you. So I've continued to teach. And I'll just mention a couple of experiences from my class that I just finished. My last lecture was Thursday called Human Capital. And I remember after class, a student came up to me and he mentioned something. I gave him an answer. He said, no, you're wrong. <laughs> so I smiled. Uh, I said, well, why, why am I wrong? Uh, so he said something. And it turned out in that case, I happened to be right. I mean, so <laughs> uh, I, I pointed out to him. And then uh, he said, oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, 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 it wasn't the first time the same student who said I was wrong. Sometimes he was right, actually. And then another student, uh, during class, I made a statement. And while I was making that statement, it seemed a bit fishy to me. I thought maybe I could get by with it. But a student raised his hand and said, are you sure of that? Uh, because, look, this is consideration, that consideration. And I thought about it a little bit, and I said, no, you're right. I made a mistake. Um, uh, you're absolutely right. So uh, that, these type of experiences with students, it, it's a cliche that teachers learn from students. Maybe at some universities and colleges, that is just the cliche. But the University of Chicago, that's really real. You do learn from your students. And what you have to contribute as a researcher, as a teacher, is in large measure due to the students you have had. So uh, I'm accepting this in part for the great students uh, I had over the years, and I continue to have. And lastly, I met my wife when I returned to Chicago, Gidi, Gidi who's sitting right here in, the fr in front. She received a PhD from the history department, so she's also an alumnus of the University of Chicago. We both have a deep and common commitment to the university. M moreover, we preserve in our home the, the Chicago tradition of discussion and debate and disagreement on a lot of subjects, uh, taken usually in, in, in a good way, uh, but sometimes <laughs> it can be pretty tough. And, and many times I've had to say, like with my students, yes, Gidi, you're right, I was wrong about, about that. <laughs> so uh, I salute that as another thing a crucial factor of my life that I received from the University of Chicago. So in concluding, I truly believe, and it's not, I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm getting this award, I truly believe that I owe whatever success I've had as a social scientist and intellectuals to my studies at Chicago, to my teachers, my fellow students, my students who I taught, and of course to my wife. This is why receiving the Alumni Medal from the university means so much to me. Thank you extremely. On behalf of the Alumni Board of Governors, congratulations once again to our student medalists and alumni award winners. Together, you represent the very best of Chicago, and we are delighted to honor you today. Your dedication to this university and the talents that you bring to this world are a significant part of what makes our alumni community thrive. The Board of Governors would also like to thank you, our guests for your contributions to our vibrant alumni community today and every day. Please join us now for the university picnic at Ratner Athletic Center, there is shelter from the rain, um, for the Uncommon Core discussions later this afternoon, including a panel with a few of our award recipients, and for all of the other parties, receptions, and fine offerings of the weekend. Thank you very much.